While the definition of infertility is attempting pregnancy over 12 months without achieving a pregnancy, uh, which is interesting because every month you have about 8 to 10% chance of conceiving with unprotected intercourse. After the first year of trying, about 85% of people achieve pregnancy, meaning 15% don't. And after two years of trying, that number turns into 95% achieve pregnancy and 5% are, are infertile. Infertility is one of those things that are many causes. About a third of them are actually male factor infertility, so we can't forget that there are usually two partners in fertility, assuming that it is a, a heterosexual couple. It ranges from things as far as pelvic disease with endometriosis causing scarring or pre-history of pelvic infection, uh, ovulatory dysfunction like polycystic ovarian syndrome is an example, but there are many different issues that cause ovulation issues. And then there's a male factor portion as well. So it, it is very much multifactorial. And a large percentage of our patients actually are idiopathic, which means we don't find the cause. Well, at the end of the day, the, uh, most causes don't actually have a sign or symptom. Like you'll have, again, things like endometriosis, which causes pelvic pain, pain with your cycle, you know, erectile dysfunction for the male partner, ovulation issues like, again, polycystic ovarian syndrome. They'll have irregular cycles or have no cycles at all. But again, a good portion of patients uh, don't have symptoms for infertility until they try to get pregnant and don't achieve pregnancy. Infertility has many different treatments. It depends on the root cause. And if you have someone with endometriosis, we can either treat medically or, or do both them surgically, depending if there's any on the ovaries or tubes. People with polycystic ovarian syndrome who don't ovulate regularly, we give them medication to make them ovulate or help them ovulate. We have our more invasive options like intrauterine insemination or in vitro fertilization, IVF. We have patients with ovarian insufficiency or lack of ovarian function, and they can use donor egg, and we have uh, patients who have azospermia or, or lack of adequate sperm, uh, and they can use donor sperm. So there's a lot of different treatment modalities depending on what the issue is. So when it comes to the workup from fertility, assuming there's nothing on history that kind of points us in a specific direction, there's kind of the basic workup uh, in, in a, a heterosexual couple Obviously, the workup is different depending on, on, on different scenarios. Uh, but the basic workup is, are the tubes patent, are the tubes open and working? Is there good ovarian function? And how is the sperm? So we would do something like a dye test for the tubes, make sure they're open, uh, called histosalpingogram as an example. Uh, we would do day three blood work, uh, make sure they get good ovarian reserve and good ovarian function. And then we would do a semen analysis to make sure that we have workable sperm. We can't forget that not everyone seeking fertility services are actually themselves infertile. Again, the example of a, uh, a same-sex couple or a single individual uh, looking to conceive. And for same-sex couples, things are a little different. Workup for a same-sex couple can sometimes in include a dye test to make sure the tubes are patent because there's a big difference between intrauterine insemination and IVF or in vitro for infertilization. The IUI needs working tubes, the IVF does not. And as far as you know, ovarian uh, reserve, ovarian function, uh, are we using donor egg from one partner for the other? Uh, so there are variations for there. So the question of preventing infertility is a bit of a loaded question. Uh, in some sense, yes, in that for people who have again, endometriosis and pelvic pain, seeking early care and preventing widespread disease, after trying to conceive for a year with regular intercourse, uh, seeking uh, medical attention for the workup. Understand that even at that point, you may conceive on your own, waiting to be seen. In a lot of other senses, it's not something you can really prevent. Patients, and I'm putting the same patients as far as couples that go through infertility. From an anxiety point of view, it is a very anxious time. And patients tend to become hyper-focused on the fertility. And so one of the things you really make to you spend time talking to patients is to really don't not to lose themselves in the process. It's a priority and it's something that we can work towards.